Hello, I am Andrew Seco, and welcome to another Sideshow Con exclusive interview. With us now, we have the celebrated fashion doll creator and designer, Robert Tonner. Robert is the founder and head of Robert Tonner Design. With more than three decades in the doll space, Tonner has made a memorable name for himself with his fashion design expertise, artistic flair, and doll sculpting skills. Today, we are very fortunate to have the opportunity to talk to Robert about his career, his passions, and maybe possibly even definitely some future projects with Sideshow. All right. Uh, <laughs> so welcome, Robert. How are you? Great. I'm great. Good to be here. I'm really excited to, to get to talk to you and, and, and get a sneak peek under the hood of your work. So, yeah. And, and, you know, I like being here without side, the crowds. Sideshow cons. Nice. Oh, you have no crowds. No crowds. That's very nice. We, it's, yeah, it's a little it bit great. more uh, personal. The digital uh, completely changes everything, though. And, and, and this is a question I was going to ask later, but might as well now. Um, you've got many years uh, in the doll industry. And I, I want to know how the digital has changed that process. Well, for me, it's, it's been a total, total change. I used to, you know, uh, I love to sculpt. And I started like a traditional sculptor. I, uh, you know, did the wire armatures and I built up models with clay and I'd right. spend hours trying to get, you know, the left and the right sides together. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it turns out I, I was born too early. I needed to be born later so I could get into, you know, so I started probably 10 years ago on, on digital sculpting, but I really, you know, I, I think the first sculpts that I did probably were like seven years ago that really went through the pipeline and made it into production. But, uh, you know, I love it and I'm taking classes all the time, trying to, trying to get up to speed. But computer is a, is a, is a different language for me and I'm having to learn the, you know, the whole thing, but uh, I'm having a blast doing it. So it's, it's good. Um, as far as, you know, people still love to do it the, the hands-on sort of way, right. but I'm lazier than that. I don't like cleaning <laughs> that up. I don't, I'd rather just go to the computer and type it out. No clay on your hands. And so you do digital sculpting. Do you also do digital painting? Yeah. Yeah. The same okay. thing. <clears throat> who wants to take out the paints and clean them up and all that kind of stuff. Just do it on your, you know, uh, procreate on the iPad or whatever. <laughs> so I, I did my research. Ready here? Ready? <clears throat> yeah. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> on December 5th, 2017 on Instagram, you shared a sculpt of Eddie Redmayne saying, I do think I'm a better sculptor than a painter. Oh, absolutely. Do you think do you think that's just digital or, or, or do you have a different relationship with sculpting and, and painting uh, traditional too? No, it's, it's definitely uh, I'm a, I'm a sculptor. I, and I, I got to it late. I was 29 when I started it, but um, definitely I'm a sculptor and, and you know, I sculpting has made my painting better, you know, and my, my drawing, right. my artwork has, has made it better, but I'm definitely a better sculptor. So you said you you got you got to sculpting late at 29. Right. You want to tell us a little bit about your journey to uh, sculpting and and to the doll world in general. Uh, how did you first come to love dolls? Boy, that's that's you know, I don't know if we have that much time, but let me see what, <laughs> <laughs> what I can do here. Uh, I'll take the time for you, Robert. I'll always all take right, the time all right, for you. all right, all right. Um, dolls. Okay, so it's it's a lot. I, you know, I, of course I knew about them. I have, I have a sister and I, you know, she was, you know, and I always thought, uh, I grew up in Indiana, a small town in Indiana. And, uh, you know, I always thought dolls were kind of glamorous. I always thought that, you know, in our small town, everything was practical. You know, there was no glamour, but I, you know, I, I really liked what I was, uh, you know, I liked, I liked the look of the dolls and all that. And I appreciated them. Uh, but it wasn't really until I, I moved to New York to go to art school that, that I, I walked through FAO Schwarz when it was, you know, ground floor store. So yeah, I, I looked at him, but uh, I saw a Sasha doll, which was a doll that was sculpted in the forties or fifties by a um, German sculptor. And it was, it was truly a sculpt. It wasn't like a, you know, a commercial looking doll. And I really thought, wow, that's, that's, that's 
art and that's the kind of art I want to do. So that's kind of got, that kind of got me started. And, you know, uh, once I got started on it, I never stopped, but that's what started me sculpting is trying to do a doll. So, so the Sasha doll was the one that brought you to sculpting, but you were no stranger to art. I mean, you went to art school. Right. Uh, what were you originally studying? What were you going into? Well, I went in for uh, fashion illustration. And uh, when I, you know, I got a scholarship to get in, which was, which was great at the time. So uh, I went in and all the classes were filled. So they put me in fashion design. And I thought, well, I'm out of this school. But I went through, <laughs> I got through the two years and I actually got jobs in fashion design, which kind of blew my mind because nobody from the small town in Indiana gets to be a fashion designer in New York, you know? So, so, but uh, yeah, I did. And I, I worked for probably, I think it was uh, 16 years in the garment center. Wow. So then from fashion to dolls, were you doing them at the same time? Well, there was, there was overlap when I, when I, for, you know, the, the uh, seeing the doll got me started with the sculpting and uh you know and i was still working in the garment center so yeah and the you know, that's that's where the idea of a business came up is because i know how to make the clothes and i know how to you know if i know how to sculpt if i can just figure out how to produce it you got a doll right clothes yeah. a doll so, yeah so, so you mentioned you mentioned the overlap um you were uh, of the fashion world and dolls is there right. is there an overlap between those two how do those are they in dialogue with each other? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, you know, especially for toy dolls and toys in general, it's, it's kind of a fashion thing. It, it works just like fashion does. You, you know, things are in the air. You know, kids grow up wanting something that they don't see. That's how things change. It's the same with fashion. You know, people grow up or, you know, start looking for something new. And uh, so they're very connected that way. I think the process is the same to get to new product. Um, but also it's like, you're always taking dolls, uh, references from uh, the fashion industry to the doll world, you know, whether it's clothes or the look or, you know, and now it's overlapping. It's starting to overlap. You have the CGI models who are basically dolls uh, like uh, <laughs> Lil Monique and, or little Michaela, I think it is, little Michaela. There's some great, great ones out there these fake models that are you know basically dolls huh so you you talked about uh you noticed a sasha doll and that that's something that's really interesting to me the the doll has a name do these dolls have stories uh sometimes you know the sasha doll i don't think had a story it was mm -hmm. the 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 artist who had her who, who sculpted it, her first name was Sasha. So they, they've been known as the Sasha dolls. Um, and I don't think there was a storyline behind it. But uh, more and more, I think that, you know, dolls and story, you know, it goes together because you want to know who that character is. Yes. They, I think people want this, the, the storyline to start off with, but then they want to go from there. It's, it, I think it's the same with kids too, you know? I mean, Barbie's a teenage fashion model, but then who knows what she is. I mean, she's everything. Um, and it's the same with collectors. They may start with the story, but they'll, they'll you know, we've had fan fiction for our character, for our doll characters and stuff. So uh, it's, I think it's the same kind of play pattern. And it is, it's a play pattern, whether you're an adult or a kid. Absolutely. Um, you, you do your... You've got a character, I'm going to say this wrong, please forgive me, Elowin? Elowin, that's right. Oh, yeah. yeah perfect, you nailed it. <laughs> um, <laughs> do, where are my gold stars? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so does Elowin have a story? Oh, she has a major story. It's, you know, uh, and, at the t it was, and her story came from what was happening at the time, and that's like fashion. You know, you look around what's happening at the time, but her story, you know, I, I sensed a sort of, you know, the people, you know, the sweetness and light that was around at the time when she came out, you know, that's what dolls were. They were, you know, supermodels and all this. And uh, I started her story with um, with kind of one line. It was, um, Elowen was diagnosed at a young age with chronic ennui. So, you know, that 
that got the look of her and the, the and I thought about that as I sketched her and as I sculpted her and all that. So, and she turned out to be, I think she was probably one of the most successful dolls we've, we've ever done. So, that's um, absolutely. yeah, good eye you have. <laughs> yeah, that's as I, I was on your Instagram stalking you like any good uh, researcher would. Uh, <laughs> and I, I found your, your uh, sculptures of Elowin and, and how recently you've been working on her again. Yeah, yeah. it's very exciting. But um, I want to I want to go back to talking about you and what you like to collect within pop culture. Uh, oh, well, I'm, I'm a big pop culture person. I love movies. Uh, I used to, oh, I was huge with comic books when I was, when I was a kid. Okay. Um, all right. Which comic books? I can't let that one go. No, it, no, I got to tell you, it was, it, it was DC because we had, yeah, it, yeah, it was a family thing. I was younger. So my older brother got to pick it. He was a DC person. So it was all DC, you know? <laughs> so Marvel was, you know, Marvel, I discovered later and love Marvel too. That was, mm -hmm. but, but DC, I kind of have a affinity for the DC characters love Superman and you know, that whole family, Lois Lane and Jimmy, you know, all that. It was also, I'm not going to tell you when I grew up, but when I grew up, that was, you know, that's pretty cool. <laughs> no, that's, that's, and, and so then it's sort of a dream come true when you get to work with those characters, yeah. right? Because yeah, you have, absolutely. can you tell us everything about that, please? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was, I, when I started my business, that, that all, it's tied into the business because when I started okay. the business, uh, I learned very early that, that, you know, like I did an Alice in Wonderland. Now, you know, everybody can do an Alice in Wonderland, but I just, I did one and she sold out like that. And it was a very expensive doll and it, and it was a name recognition. The, it, it, right. People could walk in and see who that character was. So uh, I thought, oh, this is really cool. I've got to get licenses. But I was such a small company, no one would even talk to me. Um, so the first license I went after was uh, uh, Little Orphan Annie because she has a big name. She's got an iconic look, uh, but nobody wanted her as a doll product because a couple of people had tried and got really burned. But I knew I could do it in a small way where we wouldn't get hurt if she didn't sell. And she did sell. She sold very well. Um, but that was my first license. So that was starting to build a licensing resume. And, and I kept going from there. I, I, you know, I, I push it a little bit and say, well, we, we've already licensed this character and this character. So why can't we license this this character and a very early one was uh was dc where i did a, i did superman uh and this was very early on and i was i was dying to do that uh so i went to dc and they said no of course not you can't have it. you're too small we can't we're not going to give this to you they were very nice they you know but they said we can't give it to you and i said but you don't what i want to do is i want to do it in porcelain and they were like porcelain what and, and I said, it'll cost like $500. So it's not going to, it's not going to uh, uh, interfere with anything else you're doing. And so they, they agreed. So I got them to agree and, and I did a Superman. So then I was able to get DC on my, uh, on that list of uh, licenses. So, uh, you know, that's how I built it. That's in, it, you know, every time I got a, a, a a license like that. I, I was thrilled. And it's it's like a you know, it's a dream come true to work on things like that. Especially when you're yeah. a fan. I don't think that Superman's the only one that you've done though, right? I mean you you've done other DC comics Ew, well, characters too, tons. right? Yes, yes. Tons? Okay. Tons. Um some people might also be familiar with your work uh with Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah. So uh what was that like? And 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 what's that uh whole process of, oh, of that that was that i was very proud of that was that was not letting that was like a dog with a bone i wasn't going to let go <laughs> i read that book and i heard they were coming out with a movie so i went right right to warner brothers and and we had a relationship because of porcelain superman right so right. i went right to it and, and they said no <laughs> mattel has it and you can't have it i said okay so Second movie, third book, whatever they the books and the movies keep coming out, and I go back, you know, every movie, and I say, please, can I have it? I could do it right, and uh, finally, Mattel dropped it. I think they dropped it after two or three movies or two or three years or something like that. Uh, so uh, 
I went back to them hearing the Mattel had dropped. I went back to them and, and I said, now can I have it? And they said, no, Madam Ale <laughs> we gave it to Madam Alexander. And I was like, ugh. so, uh, I, uh, went to toy fair that year. They showed their product. Madam Alexander did, and then dropped the license. They never shipped it. So, uh, I put everything I had into that and we had the license for about eight years. So it was, you know, it's really a rewarding, fun project to do. What is it like being able to engage with the stories that you love in such a such a intimate and direct way when you're creating this? How do you? Uh, what What's your thought process in the look of it? How do you put the story into it? Well, with Harry Potter, I knew that I wanted to do, and I. I th um, um, the author Rawlings wanted uh, movie likenesses, you know, and I was going through Warner brothers anyway. So, but they wanted movie likenesses and that's what I wanted to do. So it's, you know, uh, it, but then I, you know, once I get the license and then the fun, it's, the fun is not over, but the, you know, then it gets to be the serious work stuff. So I have to start, you know, uh, doing the sculpts and all that. And, uh, that's, that's like a typical sort of thing. You get frustrated and it doesn't look like the character and then it does and whatever. And the approval process and all that, it gets to be more, a little bit more challenging work, but when it all comes together, that's when it's, that's a real thrill. And the, the best thing ever is that I'd always sold to, uh, uh, women collectors and, and girls and all this. And, you know, there were some men collectors too, but, uh, you know, not, not, not very many, but the first Harry Potter doll I sold in a store, I had a showing at FAO Shores. Uh, they had me with the Harry Potter dolls and all that. And the first, the first two people up were, was a guy with his son and I sold him a Harry Potter doll. So it was, it was really a nice, that was really nice for me. So I was, I was, you know, like bridging the gap, you know, I think they, you know, the, the, the guys and the girls should all get along here in this collectible industry. So, so talking about bridging the gap uh, and, and how you're you're starting to see different kinds of collectors. How do you represent different kinds of collectors in your work? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. I try to, you know, I, I've kind of tried to push. <laughs> Let me get my thoughts here. I, I'm kind of yeah. Over the years, I I did want I didn't want just to s sell to doll collect. I mean, not that there's I love the doll collect, but they're wonderful people. And but I also I loved the whole you know the whole DC and all the you know the superheroes and the movies and all that kind of stuff too. And I thought that there could be somewhere, you know, there's a, there's a middle ground in there, and that's that's the sweet spot that I wanted to hit. Um, as far as you know people seeing themselves in the dolls that's you know there's there's different thoughts about that it's like you know some people want to project oh you know like i'm the superhero or i you know i don't know if that's true but you know i'm the superhero or i'm the i'm the fashion model or i'm the you know whatever uh uh but i also think that that dolls should represent yeah, I, I think it's interesting when dolls represent more than just, you know, one thing like, you know, or that they're all for, for the guys or all for the girls. I think that that it's more interesting when it mixes it all up. I mean, when I see collections and all I, you know, all I see is uh, my stuff. I think that's you know, for me, that's boring. You know, I, I like to see. Right. Uh, well, not that boring. I don't want to. Yeah, not that boring. It's well, yeah, you know, of course okay. not. But you, okay you've made that. it all. You want you want more. <laughs> right, right. You want yes. diversity in the collection. So I love to see. I love to see antiques. I love to see sideshow. Uh, you know, statues with it. You know, all that kind of stuff. So it's you know, and that that to me is an interesting collection. Um, but so you know, over the years, I've 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 tried to also you know push the envelope uh, when it comes to different sort of characters to do. And, you know, I've done three, three or four um, things that I thought were kind of groundbreaking for the doll world. And the first one was we did a, uh, and this, this had to be like a good 12 years ago, maybe. Anyway, I got the license to do um, a doll of the fashion model Emmy. And Emmy was considered the first plus size supermodel. And there'd never been a plus size model doll before, a fashion doll, never. So we got tons of press with that. 
tons of press. And you know what? That's not a bad thing either. When you you know you you're doing something good, you hope, and uh, you, you get pressed for it. So that's good. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the doll lasted for a couple of years. Did okay, and you know, but I was happy to get it out there. It was really good. Yeah. Um, the next one we did was uh, uh, Carmen Del Orifici, and. Carmen is, um, she's a working fashion model today, but she's well into her 80s. She's like 85 or so. If you guys don't know who she is, go you know, Google her because she's, she's amazing and she's gorgeous still. And she's very elegant and she's, you know, so she and I, we would have uh, telephone conversations and all this. But anyway, it was really fun. And so it was the first off for the, um, you know, representing a woman of a certain age. So uh, then we did uh, Zombie Boy. And I don't know if you know who this is. This is a kid from Canada who, yeah, he had, uh, he tattooed himself from start to finish all the way. He was totally tattooed and he was a fashion model. So uh, it, we got the license to do that. That was a great one. We had uh, him at, at Comic-Con uh, and he sold right out. Uh, and then the last one I did was I did, I did a doll of Jazz Jennings, who's a transgender kid. And I, I, I that project I really wanted to do because I, I just feel like, you know, people need to live and let live. And she's, you know, I could see how, I mean, this, this kid has a lot of support. She's got a great family and, and, uh, a television show, which most people don't have. Uh, but she's, uh, but she still goes through all this crap so it's it's you know to get it out there that that people are different it's okay for people to be different and it's more interesting when people are different so those are the ones that i you know i'm very proud of those because i had to search them down and i had to go really go after them and convince people that they were the right thing to do i think that's absolutely fantastic it, Thank you. and and you're you're a bit of a doll historian in my mind yeah. you seem to have a dialogue uh, with a lot of the, you have a dialogue with the past uh, with with sculptors like uh, Bernard Lipfert, right? Uh, you have a dialogue with I did my research <laughs> that you know uh, that name. That's impressive. I did my research, buddy. Yes, you, did. Uh, you have a dialogue with the present with Jazz Jennings. I think you've also got a major dialogue with the future, and I think it's uh, I think it's time we start talking about the future of dolls. All right. Um, so my first question, I just want to throw it out there first. What do you think the future of dolls is? I th oh, that's a that, that's a that's a good question. Can you want to take some time think to think about, about it? it? Well, no, no, no. Uh, I I think it's I think it's healthy when people start looking at. I mean, I think it's a healthy future. I think that especially when you see what's happening across the world, it's like uh, you know, in in the um, far east countries the fathers and grandfathers of the kids now were making the collectible dolls when I started the business. Now their kids and grandkids are uh, making their own and they're reflecting their own cultures and their own personalities and their own artwork. You know, so I think it's, you know, I think it's, it's very healthy that way. It's yeah, both, you know, it's, it's a way to bring something, you know, a fantasy sort of something into your own world that you can live with. But it's also a way to express yourself as an artist. So I, I think it's a, you know, I, I think it's healthy, and I think that, uh, I mean, it's it, there's a healthy future for for doll collecting and figure collecting. I agree, and I think that uh, it's time we get to the future of sideshow and the Robert Tonner. Right. So <clears throat> let's do this. We have okay. a very exciting announcement that we'd like to share because we are partnering with Robert Tonner. Uh, through this new partnership, Sideshow and Tonner will bring two exciting new collections to fashion doll connoisseurs. They'll be exclusively available through our brand Atomic Misfit. Tonner's debut is going to give us his 2020 fashion collection, uh, being the first full release since you took over, since you took your well-deserved hiatus. Right. Uh, well this put. first collection will consist of four dolls and three outfit, uh, three separate outfits. Uh, the whole collection is in your uh, signature 16-inch standard, right? Right. Yeah, so that lets you mix and match uh, the outfits within the collection and also the other 16-inch dolls that are already, uh, hopefully, or, or soon to be in your connect, uh, collection. 
I am so excited for this. Me too. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm excited. Um, please tell me uh, what your what you'd like to about the dolls because I want to know everything. But but walk us through the basics at the very least. Okay. Well, I can't. I you know I can't get into everything. But it's right. It's, of course. Um, we did start with a, a a you know as far as the doll itself goes, it's a brand new head sculpt for this project. Um, it's a it's a new storyline, which I'm loving this storyline. Um, I think it's a it's a fun story and it's an exciting story and it explains why she has so many different looks. So um, yeah, but anyway, that is if you are if you are a doll collector, if you're a Tonner doll collector, a typical fashion doll collector, um, there are mix and match clothing. Uh, this is the the body that we did um, a Wonder Woman doll on a couple of years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, I love the body. It works very well. And, and uh, it's a, it's a great proportion, but uh, like I said, a new uh, head and uh, that's about, I, th yeah. What? That's all you're allowed to tell us about. I the think dolls. so. I think okay, that's about all right. as far as I can well, go. Well then, then let me ask some other questions. What was your process coming into this, coming up with this idea for these dolls? Can we talk about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, we can. I, <laughs> of course, it was the, you know, I mean, we, we knew it was going to be a fashion doll. We knew it was going to be the 16-inch standard body because we have a base for that and we have a collector base for that. Uh, but then where do we go from there? And I wanted to, I wanted to make it different. I wanted to make a, a, a kind of a today's kind of story about it. So um, that's, that's where we're headed. Um, I'm using, you know, with, I was excited about Sideshow because their manufacturing capabilities. Now I have to say we brought some of ours in too. So it's, you know, cause Sideshow doesn't do a lot of, it hasn't done a lot of dolls. So, you know, I, I hopefully I'm helping them along too. Um, Absolutely. That's why we're so excited for this. Yes. Yes. Uh, but I, it's like you guys are, have a, you know, world collectors that, that I think, and it's, it's all about, um, the, the guys and the girls together and, and seeing what, uh, you know, what everybody's going to want anyway, I'm, I'm off track, but, uh, I, I'm very, uh, yeah, I'm excited about it and it's, uh, it's, it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be really fun. Robert, it was an absolute pleasure talking with you and I am extraordinarily excited to see all of these designs. Um, so for more information on the Tonner collection from Sideshow and Atomic Misfit, make sure to, uh, to subscribe to our Atomic Misfit social channels. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Atomic Misfit. And most importantly, make sure to sign up at side.show forward slash Tonner to get an exclusive sneak peek at Robert's latest designs. Robert, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. This was great. Thank you, and, and, and thank you all for watching. So stay tuned for some more content from Sideshow Con. And as always, don't forget to let your geek side show. Exactly.